Calibri. I have certain type of styles that I can use. The heading uh, looks this Calibri with uh, you know certain bold and colors and things like that. If I want to make any changes to this, let's say that uh, I want to go ahead and uh, here you can see the font right here. If I click on this down arrow, it's going to show me the font dialog box. Now in the fonts, here's your body, here's your headings, here's some things. Let's say instead of 11 point, I want it to default to 12 point. It's bigger. Okay, and so I, you know, I'll keep the font the same, but just understand, I could make all these different changes. I'm just going to make one change, change it to 12, and then I come down here and I click on default. Now, when I do this, it's going to warn me. All right, you are going to change the default font to now default body 12 point. Do you want to make this all new documents based on the normal template? If I click yes, it will then apply this to that normal template, that blank document that I have. Now I can do a lot of different things. Anything that you see here that I want to use, like for example if I came here to the paragraph dialog box, see here's that same thing, here's that default. Maybe I want my alignment to start off centered and I click default. Well that means, now that doesn't mean I can't change it, but by default that's what's set up. That's, what the, that's the true power by the way of utilizing the Office 2007 system and you know spe specifically here we're taking a look at Word you can make these changes and then you, of course if you decide later on nah I don't like that I want to change it back or I want to format it a little differently go ahead and do that the reason why I'm showing you this though is because if you're like me you get into a groove you like a certain font you like a certain size you like to use a certain style and so why not make all your blank documents that you start off with just have those pre-built in and then you can make those subtle changes if you need to so that's just kind of an example of how you can do that by utilizing this default that's what, a lot of people always ask me Chris what's that default button down there I don't get it that's what it's allowing you to do we'll go ahead and cancel here and if I wanted to change that back to 11 I would just merely open up the font go back to 11 click default it's gonna say alright you're now gonna change it to default 11 point Do you want to affect all the new documents we can click yes and now it's back to that so that's just a way that you can use this default document settings uh, in order for your normal template to come up with the settings that you want now we can also view our documents in a different way. I mean you're looking at things here on the screen and we see how we have the ribbon bar and we, we've talked about this in our workspace and down here are the different ways that you can view your documents. Now to change the views you simply just click on the button. Right now we're in print layout. Now print layout just is a big picture and this way you can see the document just like it is when you print it out. So this is the true instance of WYSIWYG. Remember that? WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. If you write down the first initial of each word in that, you get WYSIWYG. It's something that word processing became uh, with the uh, environment of a graphic user interface or the GUI. And you want to be able to, when you look at something on the screen, that's what it, you want it to come out. Well, the same thing is true here with print view. In the print layout view you can see where all the page breaks occur, you can see where one page ends and the next begins, and you can you know see how many pages are on the screen uh, just by utilizing the different views that you have here. If I click on view it allows you to say okay well we've got our print layout we can also see the same buttons that you see down here you can also see on the view uh, tab for the uh, ribbon bar so you can see all the kind of thing you can see whether you want uh, one page so one page you can do a uh, two pages so two pages fit in or you can just do the page width these are the different zoom settings you can do for the print layout now full screen uh, reading if you click on this what this allows you to do and of course my screen's just a little bit bigger it actually is showcasing to you the entire screen that you have the entire look and feel so this gives you a full screen it occupies my monitor is just a little bit bigger than the 800 by 600 we're showing so you can't see too much but when I clicked on that button you notice it expanded out and so we were able to see that then you um, and by the way this takes away everything the ribbon the scroll bars the status bar everything so if you if you do that now you can also do web layout view now the web layout view is right here you can also click up here on the ribbon bar we'll go ahead and do that now with web 
uh, view. What this do is it's going to show you what it would look like as a web page. Background colors appear if you had a certain theme or background. The text is going to be wrapped to the window rather than around the artwork in the document. And so this is just a way that you can kind of see if you want to see what it would look like as a web page. Let's say you're creating a Word document. And you're like, you know, this would look good on a website. I wonder what it would look like if I don't change any of the formatting. Well, you could just click on it and it'll show you what it would look like. Of course, in the world of the World Wide Web and HTML and the way things are set up, you might want to make certain changes where it looks great in document form, might not look so good in web pa uh, web page layout. And we'll we'll show you a little bit later on in the videos about some of the things that you can set up for making, creating, or saving it as a web page. Now, outline view is going to show you how your work is organized. In this view, all you're going to see are the actual headings of the actual document. So you can see how the document unfolds. You can move sections of text backwards and forwards. You can reorganize the document is essentially what you'll do. We're going to show you this when we start getting into table of contents, master documents and sub documents and things like that. We're going to switch to this outline view which is going to help us you know move sections. Maybe I want to take a whole chapter and move it. In other words, chapter 2 in a 250-page uh, document uh, is now going to be chapter 7. Well, inst Oh my, how are we going to do that? Well, you can go to Outline View and you can now move entire sections of text. This is really cool. So uh, we can do that. So that's Outline View. And then, of course, you've got Draft View. Now, you're going to use this when you want to just look at the words, the clip art images, the shapes, any other objects that you have will not appear when you're in draft uh, view. You won't see any page breaks. You can see the section breaks, but you won't see page breaks. This is when you're just sitting there and you want to start typing text. Think of it as you're sitting at a typewriter. It's al I almost like to call it typewriter mode. And you're just going to see this just like you were typing out maybe the first draft of your novel or whatever you're doing. That's what draft mode allows you to do. Now there's other things that we can do. I'm going to go back here to print layout here because it's actually my favorite. I usually stay pretty much here unless I'm working in large document formats. Then I might pop over into outline uh, mode and just to kind of take a look at that. So if you wanted to, you can also view multiple portions of your document by splitting the screen. So let's say you're writing this big huge novel and you want to check out the beginning or a part of the chapter where one of your characters is doing something and now you're a couple chapters there and you're like okay I want to make sure that I'm quoting exactly what this you know character said or kind of build off of this uh, scene well the way that you can do that is you can split the window into north and south halves now all you need to do is go ahead and uh, come up here to the split box if you look right above see here's your view ruler you'll see this little line. Now notice as soon as I do that it shows me these double arrows. I, I moved off there a little bit. You can see that. When you click and drag it's going to create two portions of the screen. So here's the top part and of course down here is the other. So let's say that um, I created a new page. Now I'm going to show you how to do this um, later on but I just basically added a hard page break. So here is the top of the document. So this would be page one. And then I scroll down here and I'll type in here, this is page two. So now what I can do is I can see up here one section of my document that I'm looking at. And then I can also see a second section. So I can be in two places at once in a document. This is kind of cool. Now, of course, you can also open up multiple documents. And we'll talk about that a uh, little later on. Um, so all you need to do is uh, to get rid of this, by the way, you can either come down here and drag it until it disappears or you can come up here to the view and you can click on here where it says remove split. Now when you click on remove split it's back to one window and if I scroll down you know here enough sure enough here's that uh, page break I made and here is this is page two. So this is a way that we can go in and we can view uh, the different uh, areas that we have on our page once we've created our new documents. Wow, some cool stuff that we saw, and you know, we got to get started on the right foot by showing you that, guess what, you don't have to start with blank 
documents. You can go in and create things from pre-built templates, or you can also go out and use one of your own templates that you've created. We can go ahead and set defaults on our blank document. So when you use that normal template or new blank document, you can change the fonts, the styles, some other things. We'll learn about styles and color schemes and things like that in later videos. We also saw that we can view our document many different ways, whether it's full screen reading mode where it looks like a book, or whether you're taking a look at it from a standpoint of the web, you can do that. And then if you ever need to be in two different places at one time, you don't want to keep scrolling rolling back and forth between one part of your document to another, split view is the way to go. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Entering Text and Symbols. We gotta start somewhere because right now you just have a blank page looking at you, staring at you, going, hey, put something on me. Well, obviously later on we'll see how to do pictures and things, but text is very important and we're gonna start there so when we talk about putting things on the blank page we need to number one know how to use text words letters numbers and there's also ways that we can hide text perhaps maybe just notes for behind the scenes for formatting or things that maybe I'm gonna insert something later on whatever I need but I don't want it to show up on the page when someone just is initially viewing the document or when I print it out symbols and equations very big important nowadays when we have a lot of science and and math and things that we now need to do reports on whether we're in college high school or even when we're older and we're actually working in the field guess what word 2007 allows you to do it so as we open up our document one in our Microsoft Word 2007, we had one just blank, brand new, haven't done anything to it. And a couple of things we want to show to you before we start talking about the text is number one is the title bar. The title bar tells you the name of the document that you're working on. And in this case, because we're using Microsoft Word, it's showing you that we are utilizing Microsoft Word versus something like Outlook or Excel or PowerPoint. Down here though, we also have the status bar. Now the status bar is really cool because it tells you things like the number of pages that you have as well as which page you're currently on. You can even, as it says, click and then go to a certain page how many words are in the document this is good if you're maybe a journalist or a magazine author writer and you need to have certain amount of words in your in your uh, article or your uh, byline you can also change the different views and we'll talk about those here uh, later on and zoom in or zoom out upon the actual document so if you want to see how good the spacing looks and zoom in a little bit or maybe zoom out and see kind of an overall picture of what the actual document looks like you can just simply do it here okay there's some other things that we're gonna see here on the status bar that are very very cool including one that we're gonna show you today now when we start talking about inserting text most of you I think understand the basic principle of utilizing a word processor but just in case we will explain things fairly simply here and again feel free to just you know maybe fast forward a little bit if you want to get to um, hidden text and symbols and equations uh, you can do that that's the neat thing about CBT nuggets but what you'll find is that typically what we do is we click where we want to insert in this case we're here at the top and we start typing in some text this is a test of the text typing system this is only a test so we put this in and as you see as I was typing merrily along and uh, just typing in the things the uh, cursor continues to move and text is inserted on the page now if I wanted to at any point in time if I want to uh, add something to the current or the already existing text I merely take my mouse and we'll say the excellent text typing system. So we'll go ahead and click at the front of text typing system and type in excellent. As soon as I do that and hit the space bar, you'll notice that the cursor continues to move and push or insert the text and push the uh, rest of the text over to the right. So now I've inserted excellent into the text that I have here on the screen. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. But um, let's say I wanted to not just type and insert, what if I want to overwrite? Now, many of you are familiar with, if you are, the older versions of Office. You remember down on the status bar, you had the ability to change to overtype mode. Now, 
that is still an option for you if people like to, you know, they like that instead. Now, overtype means that if I insert, instead of saying this is only a test, let's say I want to say this is not a test. Now, if I